Following the end of the Infinity Saga, we embark on Marvel's latest trend, giving our favourite characters entire shows to explore social, moral and political conundrums that the movies otherwise couldn't develop. One Division showed us the depressive fallout of grief, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier provided a social commentary on the figures we idolise, and this time around Loki seems to be discussing the topic of greed and deception. Well, it has been for the first few episodes. We are introduced to time travel in a way no longer bound to the Infinity Stones, but instead to an elusive secret service in charge of protecting the sacred timeline. Already this show has elevated the stakes within the discussion of manipulating time throughout the multiverse. Time travel and free will is an incredibly fragile topic within the MCU, and if handled poorly it could effectively remove the stakes and consequences established throughout the stories. But why Loki? Well, Loki is a fan favourite character. Ever since we saw his cinematic debut in the first Thor movie, I genuinely really loved him as a villain. The Avengers further continues to support his strength as an antagonist. Thor The Dark World introduced an element of compromise, the chance that maybe he was capable of being a good guy. But of course, it's all part of his mischief. It wasn't until Ragnarok where his essence for nobility was most profound, only to end his arc with a final act of charity. And of course, it's within his mortality that we see that suppressed spark of goodness with him. His first truly selfless act would become his final mischievous ploy, allowing him to die with dignity, which is more than what can be said for most villains. So if Loki is dead, why is he getting his own show? Why is it important to discuss his character now? In returning to this particular fan favourite character, we once again open the cinematic debate of Loki's inherent evil. I feel like beyond death, Loki has a chance to be a different person. It's clever that the show follows a past version of him where he's still 100% a villain, still ever so charming, mischievous and entirely selfish. The first episode flips this concept on its head by allowing him to physically see his death. Not in vain, but in defense of someone he envied for so long. It shows him something that he never thought possible, that he could act selflessly. So this show opens up a subtle dialogue which poses the question, how far is he willing to go to change? His true lineage tells us that he is a born mischief and rotten to the core. Yet, the adoptive Asgardian within him tells us that he can change for the better. With the right people by his side, with the right love in his heart, and the right warmth in his soul, Loki can be noble. And the movies certainly support both sides of the statement. After all, he is an iconic villain. However, I don't think the discussion should conclude on his heroism. Instead, I feel like Loki sits in a middle ground where he acts like an anti-hero. While an anti-villain might be a villain with some redeeming features, an anti-hero is a heroic character without the conventional charms. They might do the right thing, but mostly out of self-interest. This describes Loki exactly. Well, at least it describes him post-Ragnarok, because those conditions in which he would feel like he is no longer in his brother's shadow and instead genuinely loved are finally met. The anti-hero Loki only exists at this specific point of time leading into Infinity War, and though it's only a short time, it definitively proves that Loki can change for the better. His continual deception is a cruel, elaborate trick conjured to inspire fear. Yet, as we've seen, Loki is capable of being good. We've seen that countless times throughout the movies. He's torn between his greed and his love. Deep down, he loves his brother. He loves Asgard. However, his jealousy manifests as a projection of his own insecurity. He's a very grey character in the way that he doesn't commit to good or evil. Sometimes he plays the bad side to get ahead. Other times he genuinely does the right thing for the sake of those he loves. It's not often, but when it happens, it really matters. And yet the focus of this show is the old Loki, the Loki that we all fell in love with, the one motivated entirely by greed and a lust for power. And not just any power, the most powerful objects in the universe, the Infinity Stones. And herein lies what I like to call the paperweight problem. So what I'm about to propose to you right now is a thought-provoking concept I'd really love to have seen in the show. Keep in mind, this is a fairly abstract concept, yet offers its own compelling meta-commentary into Loki's self-deprecating plea for attention. The paperweight problem is an ethical problem. In just a single frame, it completely flips the MCU on its head. And I think it's actually really, really clever. Think about it. So far, we've taken the show from the perspective of Loki. We're introduced to the TVA in the same way he is. We are just as uncertain as to what power they possess. We know that whatever power they hold relates to the transformation of linear and nonlinear time, right? So surely that's got something to do with the time stone? 
But then we're introduced to the omniscient, all-powerful timekeepers, whose power seemingly isn't bound to anything. On the contrary, all that we're told is that the Infinity Stones are so worthless here that they're literally used as paperweights. And now behold the moral dilemma. Across Loki's villainous journey throughout the movies, all that he's ever known to be the absolute height of universal power is within the control of these Infinity Stones. Just like us. It's in the name. These stones hold infinite power. As the audience, we've been introduced to the Infinity Stones as the only height of that power, and in that respect, Loki is exactly like us. So the shock that we feel when these manifestations of universal supremacy are reduced to a mere commodity is exactly what's going through Loki at that point in time. The shot of the stones sitting in an open drawer is purposely provocative to make us feel as betrayed as Loki. He's now thrown immediately out of his comfort zone, or at least out of a zone where he has the upper hand and knows the immortal constraints of limitless power. This one small moment has completely antiquated his entire understanding of power. Everything that he's ever known to be the height of that absolute power has been made completely obsolete in a split second. And now he's realised how futile his pursuit of greed has been his entire career. In that split second, he has an epiphany, and it's that all of his jealousy, all of his projection and deceptive cruel ploys for power amount to nothing. Now, this is an entirely subjective take on this matter that honestly is probably the complete opposite to the direction that the writers are intending to take this character. It doesn't necessarily feel like they'll commit to anything this, for a lack of a better term, philosophical. Instead, what will probably happen is that Loki will simply just go after controlling time, yet again giving into his consuming sense of greed. And though that halts my speculation here, I still feel like it's a really interesting discussion to consider. It's that deconstruction of Loki's inherent naivety. Naivety not to a person, but to the prospect of inconceivable power. It's a commentary on his cycle of violence, oppression and betrayal. It's a wake-up call to him that all of that shouldn't matter. It's a huge sign telling him to change his ways by essentially saying nothing at all. It's an engaging prospect that the show would show us Loki seeing his numerous betrayals followed by his last good act ending his life, only to then have him have this grand epiphany that his pursuit of power is just immature. So now we face the next big philosophical question of the show. Does free will exist in the MCU? Hi, I'm Mithy, the film caffeine guy. Go, um, give me some subs, I desperately need attention. As of the time of this recording, we're barely through the six episode series, but I think this is still a valid debate to be had, especially considering that this is indeed the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This decade-spanning saga depicts the intricate storylines of a multitude of characters, each making monumental decisions to further their arcs. The depth of these characters' choices and personalities is far-reaching, so for a small miniseries about a villain-turned-hero to come in and throw this wrench of an idea that these characters never had free will is, well unsettling. But at the end of the day, I think there is an answer to this question that the show has subtly laid out for us, even though there's not too much to go off of. In episode 2, Loki comes to the conclusion that free will doesn't exist for anyone outside the TVA, to which Mobius replies, Well, I mean, you know... From what we know, the TVA exists to keep the sacred timeline intact making sure all goes as envisioned by the timekeepers and stepping in when a variance occurs. For example, the timekeepers may envision a future where I never receive my Lego Daily Bugle set, no matter what I do. Now let's say I grew a spine one day, traveled to Australia, and stole the one lying in Christian's living room. Obviously, the TVA would step in, arrest me, and reset me to the point where I don't deviate from my natural path. If I did the same thing the next time, they just come back and arrest me again, again and again, till I do what the timekeepers have envisioned for the timeline. In any case, the world keeps spinning, and I never get my Lego set. Oh, you mean ugh, this Lego set? Christian, I swear to God, I'm going to come to Australia and kick your ass. The world keeps spinning and I never get my Lego set. Huh. But even within this example, every time I decide to deviate, every time I decide to become a variant, I did it on my own volition. I get the Qantas ticket. I pitch the tent and settle in the outback. I go through the mental effort of committing to this decision that I have made myself. To me, that's my decision. That's my free will. 
So then what's the TVA? Well, it's like they depict themselves. They're a police force. Physically, I am allowed free will. I can make any decision I want, but the TVA will always be there to enforce their policy upon me. Maybe there's a good reason for such a thing. Maybe it really is to prevent a multiversal war or keep the timeline safe. But at the end of the day, we're only seeing this with the rose-tinted glasses of the organization itself, a theatrical performance by the TVA to incite fear. And that's a viewpoint worth questioning. I think another good question that's yet to be asked is whether or not the members of the TVA have free will themselves. A good comparison can be made between the TVA and the Time Masters from The Legends of Tomorrow Season 1. On one hand, you have a senate of rulers, some manipulating the timeline under their own truth, sending forces like Vandal Savage to enact their will, whereas the timekeepers of the TVA are more so a dictatorial force with a series of surrogate employees under them. They're locked into this job till the end of it all, dedicated to the preservation of this timeline. They continue to be faced with the worst reality has to offer, but move on with apathy. We got women and kids, and that weather ain't playing. No, I'm sorry, we don't. Well, how the heck did you get here? Choosing to serve their indifferent, hey. glorious purpose. These people are scared. They're about to die. They should be scared. Sure, they can act out of line, but the TVA still exists every step of the way to enforce the rules they abide by. In a way, these employees have the most ideologically puzzling job of all, living in a reality in which they remain self-aware to the sacred timeline, but must fit into their role as perfectly planned, regardless of the actions they must conduct. So does free will exist in the MCU? Regardless, I still think so. Because at the end of the day, the actions made by the heroes of this universe are still their own. However, the true spirit of free will for both the citizens of the MCU and the employees at the TVA is yet to be unlocked by the timekeepers themselves as the mystery of the sacred timeline continues to unravel itself throughout the show. In any construct, we as humans, whether we acknowledge it or not, as everyday people, conform to the ideals set by the society around us, and in some way, shape, or form, sacrifice a bit of our free will to adhere to this community. Do we acknowledge our conformity and embrace our free will, making changes to the way we live our life? Or perhaps we choose to remain in the dark, oblivious to the reality around us. In the end, unless a time variance authority comes in to stop us, it's up to ourselves to be proactive and make our own decisions about what we want to do with the rest of our lives. And so the dilemma is proposed. If time is so fragile, should we have an authority maintaining it? And within that discussion is the predicament of free will. Because while there is a council ensuring the controlled preservation of the timeline, are our actions ever even entirely our own? Those are the same questions that linger with me when examining Loki's approach to time travel and free will. As discovered in the second episode, the concept of true unbound free will only exists during the apocalypse. The TVA acts as a dictatorship and having full authority over every event within the sacred timeline. Their choice to act or remain uninvolved for better or worse are all decided within a non-linear perspective, meaning that, as displayed when Loki travels to Pompeii, efforts to eliminate or otherwise avoid the inevitable are ineffectual. The timeline doesn't matter in the apocalypse, and within this lies yet another moral debate which poses the question, do my actions during the apocalypse even matter? If I am destined to die here and now, why bother changing who I am? Will that pursuit of goodness amount to anything if the timeline can simply be reset to try again? It's like a Schrodinger's epiphany of morality. Will my actions be noticed if everything is erased? I think it's within this particular moral dilemma that Loki might see the futility in entirely changing who he is, but empathize with that sentiment that within the pursuit of aspiring to be a better person, one can discover their inherent goodness. Or perhaps, in a dark twist of fate, one might embrace their true evil nature. Mischief Managed. Wait. Thank you for watching. Please have a browse at the channel if you're interested in seeing some more film discussion. And thanks, Christian, for having me. Make sure to go check out my short film Coda coming this August on youtube.com slash filmcaffeine.